this is Riding With Re and congratulations on making it to 2021. Happy New Year. This video is going to be a little bit different. I want to talk about goal setting for the new year, goal setting for 2021 for you and your horse. So what we're going to do is run through my goals for 2020. I'm going to tell you what I set up for my horse and for Riding With Re because they were quite different and how I approached them was quite different. Give you a few tips and let you know whether or not I actually met those goals or whether I had to change them. And then I'm going to talk to you about the goal setting session that I have with my coach for the year ahead and give you some tips for setting your own goals with your horse for 2021. So grab a cup of tea or a drink, a notepad if you want to take some notes and let's sit down and chat through this together. I'll see you in a minute. So firstly, let me run you through my goals for 2020 and let me start with the horse ones. Really at the start of this year, the big question I had for myself and the big sort of goal, I guess, was can I have a horse? And it sounds really simple, but under that there were loads of questions, you know, how much does it cost? Do I have the time? Do I want one really? Can I do it? So what I did was broke that big question down into lots of little bite-sized pieces that progressed throughout the year. So when I started the year, I said, okay, I quite want to have horses regularly back in my life now. Um, I didn't want to go back to a riding school. I had dabbled in a couple of lessons prior to 2020 and it just wasn't quite the right fit for me. I wanted one step more. So I said, okay, well, can I share a horse a couple of days a week? So of course I put an advert out there as you might know already and I found Ted and I started sharing Ted two days a week and I asked myself, you know, am I enjoying this? Can I fit this in alongside work? Can I afford this? And when I ticked those boxes and I felt comfortable it actually worked out serendipitously Ted's owner said do you want an extra day and I said yeah okay so I took on an extra day during the week um, and again I asked myself the same questions could I afford it do I have the time am I still enjoying this so we progressed all the way up to having me on for me having Ted on full loan so in October of this year I took Ted on full loan and before it even got to that point I'd done a load of sums and budgeting and you might have seen my video on could I afford a horse I did all of that really as I started sharing Ted just to see you know could I eventually get my own horse in the future that was sort of the end goal so I did loads of budgeting and broke down my goal into achievable steps and now of course I'm full loaning Ted and I did come up against a bit of a rub in November which was yes I can afford it yes I still want it do I have the time and this is where I was struggling I was really struggling with having Ted on DIY alongside my job and finding the time at the start and the end of the day when my busiest time at work was to do Ted as well and that is when I spoke to Ted's owners and we made the decision to move him to full livery and then of course I had to do more sums because full livery is more expensive so I was re-asking myself those three questions to reach this goal of could I afford a horse and now I'm at the point where I can comfortably say at the end of this year yes I can afford a horse I'm loaning one now yes I have time to do it and yes I still want to do it and I think that third one is a really important question to ask yourself is all the time that you're doing this is this still something I want is this still something I'm enjoying because actually I think sometimes we can be so tied to wanting to achieve a goal that we sort of forget why we started in the beginning and I think that's a really important thing to um, to do now riding with Ree didn't start until February and I honestly had absolutely no idea what to expect I'd never set up an Instagram like this or a YouTube channel like this before and I did loads and loads of research into growth and how quickly you can expect to grow and I think the first milestone for any youtuber is hitting a thousand subscribers because that is when of course you can monetize your channel with adverts and that's when you can start making money from your channel to then put back into equipment and other things like that so I think that was a goal that I wanted to achieve and I, I'd done a lot of research into how long it takes to reach a thousand subscribers and the average number that I was getting was about a year so I told myself essentially that I was going to try and hit essentially a hundred subscribers a month and for the first few months of doing Riding with Re on YouTube I kept um, a tally of all of my numbers like my views and my followers and same on my Instagram and they were really small but I think it was so important at that stage to keep to keep a tally of those things because in the early stages when you've got like hardly any views and no one knows who you are and you don't have any followers it can be really um difficult to keep going you know you 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 spend so much time thinking of ideas and recording content and editing and uploading and then to have like 20 people watch it, it can be really disheartening. So I found it really helpful in the beginning to keep those stats. Um, and initially I wanted to upload twice a week and I did that for a while. And then I hit a point where I was really struggling with my upload schedule and alongside the actual horse riding and work and everything else in my life, I was not enjoying the uploading anymore. And 
I was starting to worry about, you know, could I film that day? Did I have time? And sometimes I just wanted to go down to the yard and not film and just have fun with Ted. So I changed my upload schedule to once a week. And I remember being so nervous to tell my followers. And the truth is no one minds like, that my community didn't care like that as long as they get content and I, I set on a one day a week and I set on a Friday and I said I was going to upload every Friday at 4 p.m. and that is something I've stuck with and actually as time has gone on I've moved away from looking at stats and now I focus much more on what I enjoy what I think is useful um, trying really hard to be honest with everyone and that is a way that I find that I can still enjoy riding with Ree and like every month I obviously have my YouTube stats I can see on the dashboard but I don't really focus on the numbers anymore I've decided that I don't really care how quickly I grow um, and that I just want to enjoy myself and you know I say to myself that if I if I want to spend a couple of days not filming I don't have to film every day and I think that's really important as well and often I do want to film I want to be able to see my riding and see what happens and share moments with you guys but I've also taken that pressure off so in that sense those goals unlike my horse ones where you know I had one big goal and then I broke it down into little steps and I worked up to it as a sort of incremental ladder when it came to riding with Ria I actually pivoted halfway through and yes I met my thousand subscriber goal but actually the rest of them I pivoted because I, I wasn't enjoying it anymore and I wasn't um, I wasn't having fun with it so I changed so I think those are the two lessons I would say from my 2020 goals is have one big goal and then break it down and if something isn't quite working halfway through the year or you're not loving your goals anymore then don't be afraid to change them because that is just as important okay moving on to 2021 my goals for 2021 so I told you a couple of weeks ago that when I first moved to this yard, um, which we moved to in the start of December, so just a month ago now, um, I sat down and I had a unmounted goal session session goal session session with my coach um, where we basically decided what we wanted to achieve for the year ahead so after a lot of chatting we had this big flip chart and we had big marker pens we talked a lot about what we wanted to achieve and what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go and everything and we decided that my goal for 2021 spring summer was to do a one day event and we talked a lot about whether we should quantify that with well you should come in the top 10 or you should get 70% on your dressage or you should go clear or whatever but I decided that actually just getting round a one day event with Ted would be more than enough. So we decided not to put any extra pressures on it because, um, you know, my coach reminded me that the whole point of these goals is that you work towards them and then you achieve them and then you feel great. And actually, had I gone to a one day event and got round it, I'd have probably felt amazing. But if I'd have added this quantifiable element of you need to come in the top 10 and actually I didn't, you know I think inside I'd still feel really proud that I got round it but then I'd feel disappointed because I hadn't hit this goal that I'd set so I think for me it's really important that we set achievable goals that we really can um, hit and that we want to work towards so from this top goal we then break it down into smaller steps so we had okay well what do we need to achieve to get to a one day event well we need to do lots of combined training we need to do dressage training we need to do hunter trials we need to do show jumping we need to do um, a few little competitions like there were lots of things that we could work on before we get to the one day event and then there was you know fitness training and then there was some stuff in dressage in our balance and everything else and we need to work out how to get ready for competition in terms of our clothing so there were lots of little things that we can work on throughout the year but the one thing that I really liked that my instructor made me write down in the bottom corner was why I ride and we just wrote the word love and I really like that because actually you know someone she was telling me a story about someone who went to view a horse and the owner said you know 70% of the time with your horse you're gonna feel disappointed and they were like what and they said yes yeah, 70% of the time you're gonna feel disappointed you're gonna wish you could have gone better something would have gone wrong and actually it's the 30% that keeps us going and it's the love of it that keeps us going and it's really important not to lose sight of why we're doing this in the first place because we're not here for the medals and the rosettes really we're here because we love it and we love our horses so I think that was such a lovely thing to keep in mind so to sum up for your horse goals of 2021 have one big goal at the top maybe two but I think for me one was plenty that's a lot to be getting on with and then work out what you actually need to do you know logically and realistically what do you need to do to actually reach that goal and break it down into really small achievable steps so that you know I've got in my equestrian planner I've got you know you've got your three goals for the year and then you've got a monthly goal and then you've got a weekly goal and I think that kind of breaking down the pyramid with your with your main goal at the top and then little goals underneath is so so important 
if you do actually want to achieve it. And then on the Riding with Reese side, um, I didn't want to set too many crazy goals for myself this year. I'm not worried about how much I grow. Obviously, I'm so excited that we're finally starting to reach new people. Um, I'm really happy with the companies that I'm working with. It would be really amazing for 2021 to have a sponsor so that I can start putting money back into the business, upgrading my equipment, getting a camera, all of those kind of things. But I'm also aware that, you know, there are much bigger uh, equestrian influences out there and that, you know, I appreciate that, you know, there are higher levels of the sport. And so I'm sort of not tied to it. I understand it's a very competitive landscape and I'm not I'm not willing to rush on that. I'm, I'm going to wait and see how we get on. I'm super happy that I've launched the planners. I'm really hoping in 2021 to do a version two of those, potentially with more colors. So there's a lot to be getting on with. And right now I'm just want to focus on enjoying it, keeping to my upload schedule and hopefully meeting more of you in the future. You know, that would be an amazing thing. There's a couple of cool things I've got on the back burner, people that I want to go and see, yard tours that I've spoken about that COVID has stopped, unfortunately, but there's some really exciting things I've got pinned to the wall for 2021. So I'm just really excited to keep sharing that content and enjoying it. So I guess to sum up my, uh, my summary for this goal setting session is set a goal that is yes, a challenge for you, but it's also achievable and make sure that you're thinking not only about what you can achieve, but also what your horse can achieve as well. Because I think if you're struggling, if your horse struggles to jump, you know, two foot and your, your goal for the year is to jump, you know, a four foot round on show jumping, it might be a little bit too much. If your horse is a little bit older and you're asking to do them something really difficult, you know, make sure that you're approaching it as a partnership for you and your horse so that it's not too difficult for both of you do something that makes you feel good don't set a goal that's going to then tie you up into knots and make you feel really anxious that's not the point the point is to give you something to strive for and make you feel really proud and don't be afraid to change it halfway through the year you know if i decided halfway through the year that actually I really am enjoying the dressage side of things and actually my goal for the year maybe would be to do a big affiliated dressage competition instead like that's fine it's your goal and the point is that you enjoy it and that you are able at the end of the year to reflect on it and feel really good I hope that you do have an amazing year ahead I hugely appreciate you being here with me it is so amazing to have such a great community I think we've really built something quite special on the Riding With Me channels everyone is really positive and everyone's really sort of yeah friendly and enthusiastic and just loves what they do so I really appreciate you being here and I'm really, really excited for the year ahead and all of the content that we've got to share. So yes, stick around and uh, have a great first day of the year or whenever you're watching this and we will see you next week. Fridays at 4pm at UK time is my upload schedule. So hopefully I'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>